one of the things that I would like to talk about is discernment. Mm -hmm. I want to know uh, how that works. Yeah, how I can tell uh, what is being given to me is coming from the right place. And, you know. and there's several ways to determine that, but they all center around some really key practices in terms of what your mind can do, your mind and your awake self, like you being in your body, what your body can do. We'll say 3D practical things, <laughs> okay? Because um, for the most part, you have, uh, if you're not fully aware you're a being of consciousness at many levels, right? So just like you've got the chakras that have different vibrations that, that, that are different as you go from the base of your spine to the top of your head, you keep going, right? There's, right. there's points of perspective that are beyond that. And they get into, you know, non-physical. Beyond the crown of the head, you don't see yourself beyond there. Okay, but each one of your chakras has its own kind of intelligence. So at the root chakra, it's a lot about keeping the body alive, survival instincts, uh, you know, you know, progression of the species. It moves on to the to the sacral, which includes procreation and um, an expression of survival and uh, an expression of creation at the, the deepest levels is what the sacral is. And then you get to the solar plexus, which is having sort of like the wisdom to use those two other energies. Like, uh, we'll call it uh, sort of instincts in a way that you identify with it being intelligent, like an intelligent instinct, you know. Uh, also gets you into patterns for your body, like riding a bicycle or driving a car, right? And that's... Basically, your body's intelligence is those three chakras right there. It is the primary element of your body's intelligence. The advanced consciousness shows up when you've got your heart chakra center. Your heart ch chakra center is the middle point of the human spectrum, right? So living both instinctual, creation, procreative, you know, that's important for survival, but that... That's more on an animal level of intelligence, right? That's a more basic way of living. You've got the heart that balances the expansion element, the greater intelligence, because beyond the heart, in just having energy, okay, where, wherever uh, the middle of your chakra system is, that would be identified as the heart chakra, okay? It's, it's the middle of the seesaw, because you move into your uh, vocal expression, right? And your communication and your declaration, that is in your, your throat chakra. That's a form of creation that humans have, okay? Some animals do. Uh, they all have some variation of it, but for them that's a, a, a type of chakra that's not as developed as it is in humans. See, all the chakras are equally available for humans. It just seems odd in our society because they're not all equally practiced. But in ancient times they were. The body is capable of this. So then you move on to your um, your uh, inner eye, your mind's eye, pineal gland, um, right? And that sh the energy that surrounds that is very much in this place where you're uh, practicing your interpretation of what you're seeing. So it not only is a place that practices seeing you know, um, what's in your imagination, your mind's eye, but it's that place that calculates all the data and plays interpreter for the rest of your body to understand. It says, this is what you're seeing, this is what you're feeling, this is what you're hearing, all that. That's why it's in the middle of the brain. Now, the crown doesn't appear to have a direct function for the body aside from it being a conduit for everything that's beyond in lighter realms. Uh, the pineal gland alone has much connection, but without the guidance of the crown above it, it's almost like, well, what do you consider useful to think about or to consider or, or to realize or to give attention to? So the crown connects you to your broader intelligence, 
Your higher self essentially lies right above you. Okay? You know when when they talk about when you die and you see your body? That's because your higher self can roam about and not be connected to your body. It has a perspective directly above you. And so it's connected by a thread. And it has multiple chakras of its own making. Okay? So your advanced body, which eventually just keeps going until you're connected with more of one and everything, right? So your soul, it's sort of like your higher being uh, is your personality. That's not judgmental about what your body goes through. It's just happy to have one, right? It's like you don't judge your fingers for being too long or short. You're just happy you have fingers, you know? <laughs> they're, they're useful for that purpose. And so your higher being is in that in-between that connects you with your soul, which speaks on another language, sort of like translating that. And so when we look at this place where how do you know, and you're getting back to your question initially, how do you know in discernment what is of value? Well, each of your chakras got a different opinion because it's got a different point of contention for how it's valuable to it. Okay? Because each energy center operates for different purposes. So you have like essentially in your body like seven different forms of intelligence. Right? As you know, when you're uh, sexually aroused and the sacral energy, that one's kind of running the show. When you're running from a bear, your root energy is kind of running the show. Right? Your adrenaline. Exactly. Right? When you're you know, feeling your way around in the dark and uh, you're not sure exactly what you remember about your space, you don't have your eyes, your guts, your gut instincts, your sort of gut memories are there to remind you like how to navigate without your other senses, right? Your heart's there to remind you that uh, love is how it feels. Love is what gives energy. All the chakras give energy of a sort. You're channeling through energy of all different sorts. It's like, you know, like a piano, you're like a chord. And each, you know, each, uh, each key is like a chakra. So they all have their own meaning. And they all give their own contribution. And it is frequency. You can, you can observe all this energetically as frequency, mm -hmm. right? That goes to a higher pitch and a lower pitch. And yeah. it just keeps going. There's no ending. Yeah. It's... it's yeah. It's like the, the chaos spiral, the, yeah. you know. So when you're talking about discernment, it is highly contextual, okay? Because anything, you could take like any subject matter and you can derive like, especially if it's something physical, like a physical human experience, mm -hmm. and there's like damn near a hundred different reasons for it existing, okay? Everything from all the different seven chakras how they are involved in it coming to pass or not. They tend to have greater themes. Like we'll say, we'll give an example. A birthday cupcake with a candle in it, all right? That evokes a very particular meaning when we look at it. And our mind's eye already has an image of what your typical one would look like. It probably has frosting. It's probably pink or a bright pastel color. Uh, the candle is not your average, you know, beeswax candle. It's probably got colors or spirals, and it's, you know, it's thin, and it's melt to melt down pretty quickly. Uh, it may come with a wrapper for cleanliness, right? The cupcake, it, it's probably served in some sort of wrapper system, and it's got a lot of sweetness. These are all qualities. Each one of these qualities gives you a particular experience. You can take out one of them, and probably still call it a, a birthday cupcake, you know, based on the fact that it's being brought to you when someone's singing your birthday. So even on that level, you have like another meaning. They could give you, you know, a birthday fruitcake in the shape of a cupcake, and it's, it's still <laughs> your birthday cupcake, right? Right, It may right. not taste like a traditional cupcake. So there's multiple tools to get you to center in on a particular feeling. Like why even have a birthday cupcake to remind you to celebrate, to remind you more about yourself and to give yourself a degree of respect and attention. Put yourself in the spotlight, center attention of respectful state. That's what birthdays are for. We celebrate special occasions this way. So there's a tie-in with that too.
okay? The colors may also have meaning. Maybe the frosting is pink and that's your favorite color, okay? Or if it's light blue and that's your favorite color or whatever it is. And the candle is also represent, uh, representative symbolically of the flame of the heart, of the life source that we identify in love. Candles often are that because they're not destructive, right? They burn and they're safe, essentially, right? You, you don't use it for cooking anything. You're doing it simply to observe it and to give it meaning by blowing it out, by saying, I accept this and I'm taking this energy and transitioning it through the breath, funny enough, because the breath is also heart chakra, okay? Notice the heart and the lungs share the same space, okay? So when we're going back to the discussion of discernment, because that's where we're coming from, it's up to what we're focusing on. We can focus on the pink icing, and we'll say, this pink icing's telling me a message. What is it? Now, take away everything about birthday, and the pink icing has a meaning for you in that place and time. Mm -hmm. Take away everything but the candle. The candle is this meaning place and time. You look at the sugar. The sugar is this meaning place and time. The protective wrapper to prevent mess, that has a particular meaning place for this place and time. Okay? Um, the person that's giving it to you, it's being served, or if, it's your, or if you're doing it for yourself. That has a particular meaning, place, and time. But altogether, each of those meanings sort of like create like a sentence. It's like putting words together. All those meanings spell out, happy birthday, Deborah. You deserve a sweet high, right? And you offer your respect to yourself in blowing out the candle, indicating that you accept you're one year older, and you're moving and transitioning through your life. Many, many meanings. We could say as a sentence, okay? So discernment has a lot to do with how many perspectives we can get on a subject. When we do dreaming, and we're going to get into your dreams because that's really where I know we're going. <laughs> dreaming, dreaming is like reading a book. It has a lot of information, and it reads unlike a regular life. Why? Because it's actually decomplicating things. It seems like dreams, oh my God, super complicated. It's only complicated because you think there's actually, or you're expecting more there. But in fact, dreams are often symbolically sharing a dummy down conversation, a dummy down perspective, because it's all symbolic in the same way. You get like a candle, you're walking around maybe with a torch, but instead it's like a giant birthday candle in your dream. And in your dream, you don't feel it's your birthday, but, but you know this is a birthday candle. It has some context there. Birthday candle is like a word that says you respecting the transition and accepting something. And when you blow out the candle, when the candle's blown out, that's how you're transitioning in your life. That's how you're moving forward in acceptance. So birthday candle has that meaning in that, in that way. So, note, everything you experience is information. And you originally asked, how do I know if this is right or wrong? No such thing as wrong. Everything's information. The only thing that can come up wrong, and this is where we get down to the meat of the matter, is that your mind doesn't understand what's being what's being said. I can say the word shit. And you'll be like, why are you saying a swear word to me? I'm like, I'm not. I'm describing an experience. Right? And it's up to the interpreter to get it a particular way. And everything is meaning. Everything is like, it's like not judging the words in the dictionary. They're just tools to get you to a different level of understanding. Now, the body... In the mind, their primary job, as you're probably aware, is about grounding. Observing on the higher vibrations, but, the low, but below the heart, it's all about how to work with physical. Okay? From your heart and lower, it's all about handling physical. From the heart and up, it's all about how do I, how do I introduce things? How do I expand? Okay? It's about dealing with the broader experience. We can say the human experience and beyond. Right? So, when it comes down to 
what is the body going to respectfully work with? The heart is in the the heart is the, is the middle of the seesaw that says, "This is good for me and my body and my physical life." Okay. Broader elements of you may seem like they're in judgment, but they're not. They're actually much more aloof, much more floaty, much more less meaningful. Like words don't hurt someone. A punch to the face hurts someone. Okay. This yeah. is how your body knows the difference between useful and not useful. And your mind uses this. It says physical is useful, non-physical not so useful. And yet, everything you've ever explored besides living like an animal has come from your heart and above. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's useful somehow. Okay? So there's a part where your body is the one that is critically saying, am I ready for a change? Am I ready to change being a, a, an animal in a body and just living my life for sakes of survival or excitement at a very primitive level? Are we ready for advanced excitement, for creation on a whole nother level? Not creation just for survival, but creation uh, as like a godlike being. Okay? So, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So when we are looking at this, we're getting to a point where we're acknowledging the attributes that we always had as humans. They're just not exercised in the context of what you're calling discernment, which is, does this have value? Does this have meaning? 